Hey guys, uh, I'm coming to do our lesson for Sunday school on Sunday and uh, recording it right now. Um, we'll upload it this weekend so you can watch it. And then on Sunday morning after um, we get done uh, looking at it, you can look at it Saturday or Sunday morning, uh, Sunday at uh, 1030, uh, we'll Zoom. Uh, girls will be in one group, boys will be in one group. Uh, I've emailed that to your parents. Uh, it's on Instagram. So if you don't have that information, just call me or text me and I'll get you the information. Um, and I, I hope you're watching these lessons, Doc and Ashley and Johnny Brock and Tony and everybody who's done them has done a phenomenal job. And so uh, it's my turn. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, but if uh, today we're going to be in Matthew uh, 4, verse 18 through 22. So if you want to go ahead and turn there, Matthew 4, verse 18 through 22. And as you turn there, I'm just going to talk a minute and then pray, and then we'll get started. Uh, I know this is different, um, and I'm getting more used to uh, uh, teaching. I hope you saw Wednesday's uh, message, and I, I hope you took it to heart. And uh, you know, as we finished our stu our series on Esther's What If, uh, and this week, uh, coming week, uh, I've been doing some studying. Some of the youth asked me to do a study on heaven. I, I really don't know how many weeks it's going to be, but we're going to do a study on heaven and uh, look at it. Um, and I, I, I know it's going to be different because it's not necessarily preaching. It's going to be a lot of information, but I, I think a lot of information, a lot of verses, a lot of scripture, uh, but I think it's information and questions a lot of you have. And I'm going to try to cover all the angles um, and I could do it in a one overview and one or two messages, but I think you'll get more out of it if we talk about the little things, uh, all, all the little things. So, uh, I hope this is what they were wanting. Um, it's just the way God led me. So y'all be praying for me as I still study it. Cause there's not, there's information, but it's all over the place. It's spread out and it's still a lot of, uh, things not clear. So I, I'm going to do the best I can with that. So starting this Wednesday, uh, we'll have a, we'll start a new series on, on heaven. I, I haven't quite came up with the name of it yet. Um, so uh, I'm working on that. Um, but uh, we're going to dig in in just a minute. I'm so glad you joined us. I hope you joined us uh, in just a minute after we get done uh, with the lesson. We'll meet on Zoom, boys at one group, girls in another group. If you need that information, just uh, text me or or call me and I'll send it to you real quick, but it's on Instagram. Uh, your parents have it on their emails that I send out weekly um, and all that good stuff. So, man, I'm just excited to be able to talk with you guys, uh, even though I can't see you, um, and and just uh, uh, open God's Word. Uh, all the other Sunday school teachers have done a phenomenal job, and I'm so thankful that I get this opportunity um, to, to, to work with you. So, like I said, let's pray, and then we'll just jump right in, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today. We thank you for being a big, big God who does big, big things. God, I thank you that you allow us to, uh, even in this time when things are not what it normally is, God, you allow opportunities and ways and things we can do to, to further our relationship with you. God, I pray for these students. Lord, I pray, God, as we walk through this today, God, if they're challenged and encouraged in some way. God, be with us in a little while as we Zoom uh, in, our, in our groups, Lord, that you would use that discussion time to further understand what we're talking about. Lord, I just pray for these students, God, as they're finishing school, God, as they are looking to the future, Lord. God, I pray you just bless them um, beyond belief, Lord. Thank you for this time. Just build our time as we open your word. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. So I'm going to read the scriptures, Matthew chapter 4, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 18 through 22 to start off with. Matthew 4, 18 through 22, and then we'll break them down in little parts and points. Uh, I sent uh, an outline to your parents. I send it every week. Uh, they can print it off for you if you want the outline with the small group questions on it for our small group leaders in just a little bit. Uh, if you don't have that, I, I'll try to make sure I clearly state the points uh, that we'll be covering covering today, okay, if you want to write it down. So I hope you're with me. So we're going to read verse 18 through 22. It says, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they was fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The, the message of our thing today is with, without delay. And uh, they immediately followed him. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about. You know, while the disciples often misunderstood Jesus, they did understand how Jesus expected them to obey. His his call to join him in ministry. And we can look to that example 
Uh, you know, athletes learn to play their sports by following the training and coaches and the examples of other athletes who came before them. In the same way, Christians learn how to obey God by looking at the Christians who obeyed God before them. I remember my freshman year in college, um, and I was a football player on the college level. Um, I had two seniors who really took me under their wings and really taught me the different terminology and made me a better player because I looked up to them and I followed them and their example and how they did things on the field and what was expected. And they, um, except for the, the, the occasional making fun of me and making me carry their stuff, uh, they, they did a really good job of pouring into me. And I looked to them, and that's what we got to do. We got to look to the saints, the ones who've ran before us. We got to look to them and follow their example. And today we're going to look at the disciples. Um, you know, he said, follow after me. And they immediately followed after him. We're going to look at their example today. And we're going to dig into it a little bit deeper and uh, look at that. And that, I'm excited to see how that portray, um, pictures out in your life. Uh, so um, we will look at three points. But let's go back to verse 18 and 19 and read again. While they was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Okay. So, um, several aspects of Jesus' call are significant. First, the Jewish culture of that day, the usual practice for discipleship was for students to seek a rabbi and become his disciples. Jesus, however, did the extraordinary thing by taking the initiative of challenged believers to follow him. So this was different. When he came to him, he said, "Follow me." It, usually, the the upper the upper the smarter ones would follow the rabbi and be discipled by a rabbi. Second, follow me meant more than physically journeying with Jesus. Not only would these men accompany him on his travels, but they would become his trainees. They would sustain more than just a disciple rabbi relationship. With him, he was calling them to a constant companionship with himself. Wow. A constant companionship with himself. And uh, so when he called them to follow after him, I mean, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. Andrew, Peter, James, and John were ordinary fishermen. And they probably did not expect to change the world with their lives. But Jesus called them to follow him into an extraordinary, extraordinary ministry. They exchanged their ordinary lives. The, They were living for one with eternal purpose and focused priority to change the world for him. So they changed their ordinary life for for the um, the, the their ordinary lives they were living for one that was, had an eternal purpose and focused priority. Um, in January 2009, uh, birds flew into the engine of U.S. Airway Flight 1549, disabling the plane. Captain. Uh, Solenberg knew that he would have to make an emergency landing, but he could not safely pilot the plane to a nearby airport. Instead, he masterfully guided the plane into a landing on the Hudson River, an unthinkable maneuver that he had never before attempted. His skills saved all 155 people on board. In addition, when the plane landed, he went back into the cabin to make sure that everyone had evacuated. This humble ordinary man did the extraordinary and see in our lives if we'll follow um andrew and peter and james and john and their and we'll follow them in their direction when god calls them and god calls us he calls us from ordinary to extraordinary i love that we make plans for our lives every day and you do not expect anything other than the ordinary but jesus has called us to follow him in a great way for an extraordinary purpose he has called us to reach the nations for him. And when we follow him in that purpose, our lives becomes anything but ordinary. We must seek constantly to offer up our lives in exchange for the call to uh, follow Christ. I tell you it all the time, we serve a big, big God. We serve a big, big God. And our big, big God wants to do big, big things. And he has big, big plans for you and for me. But we have to set the call. He's calling you and he's calling me to live a different way. You know, I always say this too. He didn't create us to fit in. He created us to stand out. He created us to live differently than the world around us, just as Andrew, Peter, James, and John did. So the first point I want to make today, point number one, if you have your outlines, point number one, God calls us to exchange our ordinary life for a life of following him. And when we change that ordinary life for a life following him, it leads to the extraordinary. And I don't know about you, but I want to live the extraordinary life. I want to live that adventure and I want to have fun in Christ.
Let's look at verse 20 again. Verse 20 says, immediately they left their nets and they followed him. Immediately they left their nets and they followed him. When Jesus called these men, they did not hesitate to obey. How many times when Jesus calls us to do something, and we know Jesus is calling us to do something, or our parents ask us to do something, we hesitate. We hesitate. They immediately left everything and walked away from the life they had known. There was little consideration, only obedience. Disciples' immediate obedience started an incredible ministry that would take Jesus' message to the whole world. See, no denial, no excuses, no delay. Just immediate obedience. See, we can look to them and look to their example to push us forward. And that's what we got to do. We got to look to their example. They was immediate in their obedience. You know, firefighters save countless lives every year. When the fire chief tells a firefighter to go to a fire, they must immediately drop whatever they're doing and get and go and put it out. If they hesitate, people's lives are further in danger. In the same way, an amazing ministry opportunity and for some, a salvation opportunity can come when we obey God immediately. Sometimes, if we're just obedient in our walk with Christ when he calls us something, good things happen. Sometimes, if we wait, we miss that opportunity he had for us. We, can, we always know, we always want to know God's will for our lives. I think everybody does. Following God is not an action that we have to question. He has commanded us to follow him as we share the gospel with the world. We do not have to spend the time debating whether we should follow Christ. The actions should be foremost in every decision we make. We must always ask ourselves the following question. How can I best follow Christ and spread the gospel? I remember when I was growing up in a youth group at Westview Baptist Church in Op, Alabama. I know that sounds funny. O-P-P. Yeah, um, but I remember our slogan was, yes, Lord. And, and the whole point was we're, we're supposed to think and be ready no matter what he calls us to. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, you know, um, and I, I never forgot that. And, and I try to live that in my life. You know, whatever, I'm, I'm ready. Whatever he calls us to, even if it's out, outside of our comfort zone, even if it's taking a, a risk or a step of faith, if I know without a shadow of a doubt in my life that God is calling me to do something, it's yes, Lord. No questions asked. That's what these men did. It was yes, Lord. They said, come. They said, yes, Lord. And they went. And, man, they changed lives after lives after lives because they said, yes, Lord. Uh, there's not always time to stop and pray. Sometimes you just know in your heart. Um, sometimes you get that opportunity and you can miss it because you're not ready and you're not looking for it. So I, I pray we'll have that mentality is yes, Lord, in our lives. And we can, we can look to their example to see it was immediate obedience. There was no delay. Without delay, yes, Lord. So point number two, point number two on your outline, God calls us to obey him immediately. No delay. Without delay, guys. God calls us to obey him immediately. So let's look at verse 21 and 22 again. It says, And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Um, Andrew, Peter, James, and John immediately left their jobs. They left their families to follow Jesus. They knew that they had to place God's call above their own families. Friends and comforts. Nothing was greater and more desirable than following Jesus. And sometimes God's going to call us to do things that don't make sense. Or at that time, it doesn't make sense. And sometimes God's going to call us to do things that are outside our comfort zone. And sometimes God's going to call us to do things that there's no time to think. If it's going to happen and it's going to work, it's got to be done now. But we got to obey. Yes, Lord. The writer of the Bible study lesson you are now studying gave up rock, rock stardom to follow Jesus. God called Aaron Hall to leave the band Bad Charisma. Look it up. It's really cool. Bad, not, not the band, but he left that for this. Bad Charisma, a band that sold thousands of CDs, open for bands like Three Doors Down, Our Lady Peace, and Nickelback, performed for audiences in excess of 10,000, and flirted with major record deals. Though Aaron loved his band, God called him to be on mission with him. Instead of pursuing worldly pleasures, Aaron is now thrilled to be following God with his wife and daughter as he leads worship at a church in Birmingham, Alabama, and writes lessons for student life and life Bible study. I thought that was a pretty cool story that the guy that wrote this, gave us the information for this lesson, um, had to listen to a call. God called and he obeyed immediately. 
You know, at times, following Christ may require us to sacrifice various parts of our lives for the sake of following him. Um, when he, we consider Christ's calling to make his name known to all the nation as our first priority, we are able to make decisions that reflect this priority. Loving Christ above all else enables us to follow him first. Point number three. Point number three, if you're doing your little outline, following Christ requires sacrifices. When God calls us to certain things, sometimes we got to we gotta sacrifice things. It might be our time. It might be our money. Uh, it might be where we live. Um, it might be something we love to do. Uh, you know, I talked about Wednesday night about, you know, working three jobs in college and having to give up football, something I love to do. I had to sacrifice that to, to eventually become what God wanted me to become in ministry because I couldn't do football and intern and do football and do all the other things I needed to live to, to better myself at that time. Um, God's got a calling on your life. And when he calls, we got to listen and we got to obey. We can learn from these guys that went before us. We can learn from Andrew and Peter and James and John. And when he calls, yes, Lord, without delay. You know, God's grace should inspire us to obey his call with passion. Because of God's grace, because of what he's given us, it should inspire us to obey his call with passion. And I hope you see that in my life. I, you know, I hope you see my passion for Christ. Um, the way I, I love on you guys or try to love on you guys, the way I love on, on people, the way I love my job, the way I, I love my family, it's because of my love for Christ and the passion I have for him. And more than anything else, I want in this student ministry, more than anything else I want in, in, in the world around me is them to see my love and passion for Christ. Um, I, I, more than anything, because of what he's done for me and what he's done for you. Think about it. The God of the universe works through us. Imperfect, ordinary people. I mean, these guys were just fishermen. Fishermen. It wasn't nothing extraordinary about them. They didn't have some scholarly, wasn't the smartest tools in the shed. They were just ordinary, everyday people. And God chose to work through them. He believes that we are the right people to participate in specific ministries that he has selected for us before the beginning of time. That makes us extraordinary no matter what happens in our lives. Let his grace give us confidence to obey him wholeheartedly. Hey, guy, if God is calling you to it, he's going to provide everything you need to get through it. And I say that all the time, and I mean it. I, I, I think every adult that will be talking with you in just a minute on Zoom would agree with me. If God calls you to it, he's going to provide everything you need to get through it, even if it's hard, even if it's, it doesn't make sense, even if it's a sacrifice. You know, as we talked about Wednesday night, he's putting the pieces together. He knows the big picture. We don't know the big picture. So whatever he's calling you to, whatever that looks like, without delay, yes, Lord, follow him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning. Lord, I thank you so much for who you are. God, I thank you so much for loving us unconditionally. God, I thank you for um, the opportunities that you put a calling on our life. God, you put a calling on our life, um, and I'm so thankful for that, Lord. God, I thank you that you think enough of us ordinary, everyday people to want to work through us to do extraordinary things. I can't grasp that, Lord, but I thank you that you allow me to do that. Lord, I thank you so much for who you are and what you do. And God, I just pray right now, God, that you would just empower and strengthen and encourage these students. And God, you do have a calling on each one of their lives, and I know they're at a stage where they're trying to figure that out. And God, I pray you show them that. They have a calling right now, not even future calling. They have a calling right now in their schools, in their homes. And God, I pray you show them what that calling is right now. But I also pray you show them what that future calling is, what they're going to do for a career, what they're going to do for you. And God, and I pray whatever it is, if it's a sacrifice, they'll just say yes, Lord. God, we can learn so much from the people that go before us. We can learn from their mistakes. We can learn from the things they did right, Lord. But we can learn so much. And we can look at them as an example of the ones that go forward, us, Lord. And I pray today we'll look at Andrew, Peter, John, and James. And God, when you call us to something, God, we'll obey without delay. And God, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. 
don't forget, guys, um, we'll be doing Zoom at 1030. Um, and don't forget about um, you got two groups. If you need the information, just text me real quick and I'll get it to you. Um, also, we have um, the service at 11. I hope you're watching that with Brother Tim and Brother Jason. They do a really great job of of setting everything up and uh i know the worst of this week is going to be great and I, and from what tim told me about the message i'm sure that's i'm excited to hear that myself so uh, well just know i love you um i'm always here if you need me all you gotta do is call we'll work something out if your parents are okay with me meet with you one-on-one -on -one or something you can come up to church and, and and drop by um just whatever you they'll let you do uh um, but no, I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm here if you need me. Uh, we got a great a group of adults and Johnny Brock and Doc and Sheila and Ashley and Melissa and Tony and, and a bunch of others who love you guys and they'd be willing to help you too. Um, so just know I love you. I'm here. Um, I hope you see my passion and love for Christ and I hope that encourages you to, to with everything you do, have a, a passion and love for Christ. And uh, I just pray uh, for you regularly and I uh, just hope you have a great day. So we'll uh, see you um, soon and um, just know I love you. All right, talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.